Welcome back to Native Speaker. We're going to continue looking at the but family here and the concession cousins. In this, we're going to look at obviously. How is obviously a concession word from the but family? Well, we use obviously when we want to quickly clarify something we've just said in order to avoid a misunderstanding. So native speakers use this when they want to be diplomatic and ensure they are not misunderstood after they have said something and want to promptly add a counterpoint. Let's look at some examples. So we'll use the position A, B and C format and we'll put here in this one, I won't call it a subclause and a po uh, main clause, I'll call it a point and a counterpoint and we'll put our link phrase in the middle. Here I'll make some new points and then I'm going to put in a but link. Now the but link I'm going to use is obviously. Now the first thing you'll notice here is that I've changed the punctuation option over here and we now have some options. You can have a dash. The dash is often used when you're quickly adding something in a conversation. It is, I suppose, on the informal side rather than formal but it sometimes might come up in a report if the tone of the report isn't too formal. But yes, it would be used in a lot of conversation. It can be used in another written format, as I said, if you're quickly following up. It is possible to use the semicolon, and I've even included a full stop down here, and you can see then that it's a capital O. So. Korean food can be very spicy. Obviously, it's really tasty. So in this case, maybe you're talking to a Korean friend and you might complain a little bit about how spicy Korean food is, but very quickly you're going to follow up and clarify that you're not criticizing it fully, that it's, it's really tasty. Americans can be very straightforward and direct. Obviously, I mean in an honest and nice way. So you'll see here that I've put in I mean in red. Why? It often partners these um, follow-up but phrases like obviously because you're clarifying. So I'm just putting them in there. You don't have to use them. I just want you to make uh, to be aware of, of them. I'm not really keen on Italian cars. Obviously they're very stylish. I'm just more into motorbikes myself. So maybe you're speaking to an Italian person and you quickly want to clarify that you're not criticizing their very famous design and their car industry. Lorraine isn't really into athletics and sports, to be honest. Obviously, she's in great shape. It's just that she's really busy these days. So in case that we would get back to Lorraine that you were suggesting that she wasn't fit and in shape, you're clarifying the point here. You'll notice here as well, it's just that and just is often used when you're explaining a point. So that's a very popular phrase when you're explaining. And in this case, it's not a bad partner to include with obviously. So sometimes we add more than one spoon of sugar to the cup in order to you know, communicate more effectively. Mark is having problems with certain aspects of his schoolwork. Certain aspects of is the formal version of some of. Okay, it's not super formal, but it's it's pretty formal, more formal than some. So Mark is having problems with certain aspects of his schoolwork. Dash, obviously he's very intelligent. He just needs a few extra lessons. So imagine that a teacher is talking to the Mark's parents, and he's sensitive that the parents, um, or he's he's conscious that the parents might be sensitive about any negative comments about Mark. So the teacher very quickly follows up here and says, obviously he's very intelligent, so they say something very positive about Mark. He just needs a few extra lessons. And again, we see just as this ameliorating spoon of sugar, this, uh, this additional word that shows you're not trying to be negative. Sarah is very expensive in terms of her consultancy work. Dash. Now, obviously, she's very, very good. It's just that she's not cheap. Now, I've added now here, just so you can see that native speakers sometimes do that. They just add this word now. And it's like a form of punctuation. It's a way of balancing the sentence. Um, again, it is informal. So if you wrote it, I'd say you might see it in WhatsApp messages, maybe an informal email to a friend. 
uh, or a very discursive conversational style uh, article maybe in a in a magazine but not for a, a formal essay or like an IELTS essay or something like that so here the person is saying something that's critical of Sarah she's very expensive in terms of her consultancy work and we'll see later that in terms of is a wonderful member of the about family okay so Sarah is very s expensive in terms of her consultancy work. Now, obviously, she's very, very good. So I've added two varies here as some more sugar and then an explanatory phrase. It's just that. OK, it's just that she's not cheap. So there's, again, this immediate clarification in order to be diplomatic. Uh, this example, we saw something like this earlier. The government needs to do more to get people back to work. And then I've put a full stop and then I've started a sentence. Now, it's not hugely popular to do it this way, but I just wanted to show you the range of possibilities. I have to say, I think the dash is more popular, but that's just my own observation, my own opinion. But these three could work. So here I've put in a full stop. Obviously, comma, that's easier said than done. So here, I'm, even though I've been critical that the government needs to do more, I'm saying, well, that's easy for me to say. Now, by the way, this is a lovely phrase in English. It's a very popular idiom. We say easier said than done. You can say that's easier said than done or easier said than done. So if somebody tells you that you need to lose weight or get fit because they've lost weight and they're very fit, you might say it's easier said than done. Or you could say, easy for you to say. Here we say, that's easier said than done. And then we have a second but. But nevertheless, it needs to be done. Now, here we see something very interesting that we'll talk about later. Sometimes in very informal structures, we can use a but, but together. Okay, And it's very common in spoken English. It's not really correct, but native speakers do it all the time and really it's a subconscious thing for them to be a little milder a little friendlier a little less critical a little less harsh in their criticism so uh, but nevertheless it needs to be done so really what this is is like a second spoon of sugar where they're just trying to be nicer if they weren't trying to be as nice they wouldn't put in the the second but but i want you to be aware of that that sometimes when native speakers are using English informally. Now, you'd never do this in an essay, in a, in a report in college or at work. You would never write that, but it's very common in spoken English. Okay? So, there are some nice concession phrases using, obviously. Don't forget these phrases here that I've added in with them. I mean, I'm just, it's just that, it's just that, easier said than done. These are added as extra sugar to quickly clarify that you're you know trying to be a little bit more diplomatic now look at this some options for obviously you could say of course naturally needless to say and i put in obviously again or it goes without saying and then of course again here so korean food can be very spicy of course it's really tasty so you see the way when people are speaking that they add this very quickly Korean food can be very spicy of course it's really tasty Americans can be very straightforward and direct naturally I mean in an honest and nice way I'm not really keen on Italian cars needless to say they're very stylish I'm just more into motorbikes myself and you'll notice this tone as well needless to say they're very stylish you see that Lorraine isn't really into athletics and sports, to be honest. Obviously, she's in great shape. It's just, it's just that she's very busy these days. Mark is having problems with certain aspects of his schoolwork. Naturally, he's very intelligent. He just needs a few extra lessons. Sarah is very expensive in terms of her consultancy work. Now, it goes without saying. She's very good. It's just that she's not cheap. And here you see again this phrase. Now, it goes without saying. You see that kind of tone when it's used for speaking. And then you can put it in in writing as well. And again, of course, over here, the government needs to do more to get people back to work. Of course, that's easier said than done. But nevertheless, it needs to be done. So you can tell a little bit from the way I've spoken those phrases 
uh, as, as to how they're used and how useful they are. And it's interesting that you know students are often surprised that words like obviously, of course, naturally, needless to say, it goes without saying, they're surprised that this can mean but. But as I've said, there is a nuance to a lot of these members of the but family. And even though this is concession, this this particular group of words, they are used. Why? Well, we can see that obviously and all of its synonyms, such as, of course, naturally, needless to say, it goes without saying. These are used like but when we want to balance a statement with a diplomatic counterpoint. So you're quickly following up there to show that you're not, be, you're tr not trying to be rude. So there you see another uh, couple of members of the but family for concession but with this immediate diplomatic follow-up. If you enjoy the lesson and you'd like to join one of our online courses that include live interactive lessons just drop us a line on info at nativespeaker.ie and we'll be happy to chat to you about that. If you enjoy the lesson don't forget to like and subscribe and give us a thumbs up. That's all from me. The very best of luck and I'll see you all next time.